Hi, in this episode of Sex 101, we're talking about good sex. And before I get into the bulk of the biblical message, let me encourage you uh, to pray and ask God for help and to submit your sex life to the Lord Jesus through prayer. You know, if you're not married and you think the big thing you need in life uh, is a husband or a wife to satisfy the sexual longings, if you're not given the gift of celibacy, Pray for a husband or a wife. Pray for that spouse. And uh, let's see what the Lord will do for you. And keep praying. But more than worry about finding the perfect spouse, worry about becoming a good husband or a good wife. Work on the character aspects so that that, uh, that pairing can be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and produce godly offspring as God intends. Now, if you're in a bad marriage, or if you're enduring bad sex within marriage, or whatever the troubles may be, once again, I encourage you to pray. Ask the Lord for help in your situation. You know, if your husband is abusive, or if your husband is an alcoholic, or a workaholic, or hasn't been faithful, or has a porn habit, whatever the case may be, ask the Lord to redeem your marriage, both husband and wife. You know, likewise, if your wife is 50 pounds overweight or you know, let herself go, whatever the case may be, you know, ask the Lord, you know, for help in the situation. Ask the Lord to bring that spark back. Ask the Lord to bring you know, whatever the change is that's needed. You know, if uh, there is sexual sin in your life, you know, maybe you're in an adulterous relationship or maybe you're have a pornography addiction, cry out to the Lord Jesus for deliverance and for freedom uh, because that's not, that's not good sex. Maybe you've had an abusive past or people have taken advantage of you and sex just has bad memories, uh, bad feelings about it. Give that to the Lord. Ask the Lord for healing. Cry out to the Lord Jesus for healing and deliverance. My experience is that in modern Christianity there's been too much discussion on sexual sin leaving the impression that sex is something to be ashamed of or to avoid or to apply extra rules to. Here in the Sex 101 series we endeavor to obey the biblical imperative do not go beyond what is written. King David wrote that the boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places And the Apostle Paul wrote that everything God created is good. God God himself speaks of his naked sexual creation of male and female as very good. Unfortunately, the devil is just as active and interested in stopping good sex within Christian marriage as as the devil is at promoting sinful sex outside of marriage. And the devil's work has included legalistic Christians and unbiblical rules. The family, beginning with male and female in marriage, is the fundamental unit of creation. And adding extra biblical rules dictating how things within the marriage sphere operate is not within the sphere of the church. When it comes to specific expressions of intimacy between husband and wife, most of the details are simply none of the concern of religious people who seek to exert unbiblical authority over others by adding extra rules. Scripture says, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, because God will judge the adulterers and all the sexually immoral. Now, Encouraging or approving or condoning sex outside of marriage, that dishonors the marriage bed. But prying into or dictating what does or does not happen on the marriage bed also dishonors the marriage bed. Churches or other religious people are simply wrong when they add extra legalisms and rules. Some historical examples have been attempts to discourage contraception, uh, proscribing or banning 
non-procreative expressions of intimacy between husband and wife, and proscribing or banning expressions of marital intimacy other than the so-called missionary position. Now, as a matter of wisdom, I'd caution young men from pressuring their wives to quickly try lots of things they might have heard of or seen in exposure to pornography. Sex between husband and wife needs to be loving and mutually agreeable. Things that seem distasteful or unpleasant to either party should wait. So in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you applies in marriage. Also, the golden rule says in everything, so it applies to the marriage and to marital intimacy. If you don't want to be pressured or manipulated to do stuff that violates your conscience or that you're not comfortable with, then you are commanded not to be pressuring your spouse for stuff out of their comfort zone. That being said, let's get explicit in our repentance from some silly rules sometimes expounded by legalistic Christians. Sometimes they may have been well-meaning. Others might have been hypocritical. But we throw off their yoke, remembering that Christ's yoke is easy and his burden is light. A little wine is okay. Remember that Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding. Perhaps it was because a little wine can help shift the heart's focus from work to play. And celebrations like weddings and the following marital bliss are expressions of play. But let's not abandon moderation. Too much booze can and will inhibit marital bliss and optimal sexual function. Some folks may not like wine or their conscience might be troubled by it. That's okay too. No one is saying you need to drink wine or that you should drink wine. I'm just saying that it's not a sinful choice in moderation. Oral sex is okay between husband and wife if it is a loving and mutually agreeable expression of marital intimacy. Why? Because the Bible never says otherwise, and we endeavor to obey the biblical imperative to not go beyond what is written. Now, if one doesn't like it, or if it violates their conscience or other sensibilities, then one can certainly avoid it. Like body position and contraception, this and most other intimate questions belong to the sphere of husband and wife to consider and figure out what is the best expression of their marital love and intimacy. If they don't like it, God bless them. If they do like it, God bless them. Orgasms, both male and female, are okay and desirable. If there is some difficulty in these areas, you know you can pray and ask the Lord to help both husband and wife get to the finish line. The devil wants to rob this, and God wants to restore this part of marriage, and everything else that's been lost through death, decay, and sin. Remember the verse in James that says, You do not have because you do not ask God. It's okay to pray, and it's good to be loving and patient and take the time for both partners to fully experience marital bliss, including orgasm. Speaking of, you do not have because you do not ask, within marriage there is nothing wrong with medical prescriptions to assist with erectile dysfunction. But why not pray about it first? Why not be a little more patient? Sarah laughed at the notion that God would help Abraham's ED so Abraham could bring her pleasure. Yes, that's in the Bible. God cured Abraham's ED. Scripture says his body was as good as dead. What do you think that means? Ever wonder of meaning when the scripture says the grasshopper drags itself along? Here's the bottom line. What does the Bible say? Have you ever read the Song of Songs? I'm not going to unpack every metaphor for you, but the gist of the biblical revelation is that sex between husband and wife 
is a gift that God says is good and that can be enjoyed. Lose the hang-ups. Lose the rules. Love one another. If you're not married, put on Rebecca St. James waiting for you. Pray for self-control and take a cold shower. If you are married, you have God's blessing and permission. Have a glass of wine, put on some Josh Turner, and get it on. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, oh, oh.